What's up guys, Ame here, and welcome to the Obsidian Sanctum Raid Guide. Let's get into it. Upon entering the raid, you will see trash mobs walking around. These mobs are linked to Sartharion, so make sure you kill all of them. If you don't, they'll pull when you engage the boss, and you'll be corpse running in no time. Surrounding Sartharion are three smaller drakes, Vesperon, Shadron, and Tenebron. How you handle these drakes changes how the Sartharian encounter happens, as for every drake you leave alive will be a part of the encounter. You can choose to leave one, two, or all three drakes up, triggering the infamous Sarth 3D encounter. You will receive better loot from this boss for every drake you leave alive for this fight. Pause the video here or take a screenshot to see how the loot changes for every drake left alive. Each drake left alive when you pull Sartharion will also buff the fight in some way. Tenebron's presence increases shadow damage taken by 100%, Shadron's increases fire damage taken by 100%, and Vesperon's presence decreases the maximum health of every raid member by 25%. When each drake dies, their respective buff will go away as well. Sartharion also applies a buff when any of his drake friends are a part of the fight. Will of Sartharion, increasing the total health of every dragon by 25%. To begin the fight, have the tank pull Sartharion or misdirect him to the tank standing here. Everyone else will set up like a normal dragon fight, as Sartharion has a classic trifecta of dragon abilities, a cleave, a tail lash, and a fire breath. This positioning will leave the largest amount of space available for the raid to spread out. Periodically throughout the fight, a raid warning will appear saying the lava surrounding Sartharion churns. Lava waves will then spawn from either the north or south side of the encounter area. When the waves spawn on the north side, the tank will slightly pivot to avoid getting hit, and the rest of the raid will need to immediately move to one of the gaps to not get hit. When the waves spawn on the south, the tank should ideally be able to stay where he is while the rest of the raid adjusts accordingly. If you get hit by these waves, a dot will be applied to you that will do a large amount of damage, especially with the fire damage percentage increases from the drakes in the fight. Throughout the fight, lava blazes will spawn in groups of 2 to 4. An off tank will need to pick these up and the raid will need to DPS them down. If a lava wave hits one of these adds, they will enrage, receiving 200% increased damage and 100% increased health. This can be dispelled by hunters with tranquilizing shot or rogues with anesthetic poison. Off tanks should do their best to kite these mobs around the waves so they don't get this enrage. 30 seconds into the fight, Tenebron will join the fight on the west side of the platform. All three drakes will use these same two abilities. Shadow Breath, which does damage in a frontal cone, and Shadow Fissure. Shadow Fissure is identical to Kel'Thuzad's ability. It summons a shadowy area on the ground, dealing a massive amount of damage, so just make sure you don't stand in it. Have your off tank pick him up and face him away from the raid. While fighting a drake, they will all open a twilight portal to an alternate realm that raid members can enter, similar to the portal mechanic from Kalagos and Sunwell. Tenebron's portal will open up a realm that is chock full of eggs. These eggs can be killed, and after a certain amount of time, any intact eggs will spawn whelps that will transfer over to the normal realm. However, for this portal, the strategy is to actually not enter it and kill the eggs. Instead, you will focus all your damage onto Tenebron. When the whelps hatch and cross over into your realm, a tank will pick all of them up and you can AoE them down with Tenebron. 75 seconds into the fight, Shadron will tap in and get in on the action. If Tenebron isn't dead, the off tank will drag Tenebron over to the south side of the platform where Shadron spawns so the raid can cleave them down. Consider using Bloodlust or Heroism here to get caught back up if Tenebron is still alive so you don't have Shadron and Vesperon up at the same time. Shadron's portal contains an Acolyte of Shadron who increases fire damage done by Sartharion by 50% and makes Sartharion immune to all damage. Like Tenebron, one of the strategies utilized here is to not enter this portal and focus all damage on Shadron. Since the buff only makes Sartharion immune to damage, it doesn't really have an effect on the fight since all the DPS is focused on the Drake and any fire blazes currently alive. The 50% damage increase can be dangerous, so healers need to make sure that they're watching the tanks and keeping them alive. If the damage is too much for you with this strategy, you can enter the portal and kill the Acolyte to get rid of the buff on Sartharion. Last up for the Drakes, Vesperon will enter the ring two minutes into the fight on the north side of the platform. 
Like before, drag Shadron to where Vesperon spawns to maximize the uptime. Inside Vesperon's portal, you will find an Acolyte of Vesperon. This guy increases fire and shadow damage taken by all players by 75% and puts Twilight Torment on the raid, which will cause you to damage yourself while attacking. Now this portal you will actually enter, as this is a buff that you do want to get rid of as fast as possible. Have one tank or a plate wearing DPS, one healer, and most of your DPS go into this portal and burn down the Acolyte as fast as possible. Once dead, come back out and burn down Vesperon. If you get another portal before Vesperon dies, have the same group go down and kill the Acolyte again to get rid of the buff. Once Vesperon is dead, the only thing left is to kill Sartharion. Continue to dodge the firewalls and kill all the lava blazes that spawn. At 10%, Sarth will soft and rage and summon 10 lava blazes. Just keep pumping the boss and AoE the lava blazes down. And that's about it. Rinse and repeat till the boss is dead. Cheese strat warning, in pure classic fashion, one of the most popular ways to handle this boss will be to completely ignore all mechanics and just burn the boss down. In order to do this strategy, you will have to kill Sartharion before Shadron joins the fight and make Sartharion immune to all damage, so you have about 75 seconds to burn the boss down. What you'll want to do is to have your tank run in and pick up Sartharion here and have them get aggro on all the lava blazes when they spawn. This positioning lowers the amount of time it takes to get into position, which is key when trying to burn him down as fast as possible. Pop Lust and start blasting. When Tenebron lands, misdirect him to the tank and just pump the heals into the tank while you burn the boss. At 25% health, Tenebron will get pretty upset and start trucking your tank. What you'll want to do here is to have somebody taunt Tenebron off of the tank and start running to kite Tenebron while the raid kills Sarth. Tanks and healers should use their cooldowns here to help secure the kill. Once Sarth dies, Tenebron will de-aggro and you'll have your achievements and loot. Last thing guys, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you out, hit that like and subscribe button. It honestly helps the channel out a ton and I greatly appreciate it. Also, feel free to share it with a friend or post it in your Discord to get your guild ready for Wrath. I'm also live on Twitch throughout the week if you want to see some of this gameplay in action. Now this was the guide for the three drakes version of the fight. If you want to do it with two drakes, one drake, or zero drakes, all you have to do is kill the drakes you don't want to be a part of the fight beforehand and they won't be included. Everything else is exactly the same, just without the dead drakes mechanics. That's it for me today though guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.